let's get started with the modeling of this axe. Now I'm going to press G on the keyboard just to hide the grid for a moment. And I want to start with how we uh, are going to go about modeling this thing. So quite often when I start modeling, what I like to look for is uh, how this object is built in real life. So we can see that this wooden handle is separate. The braiding here is separate. So is this one up here and the ax head itself is separate. So I'll probably start from there. Now we want to make sure that we are in the right layer. So on the left here, I'm currently in references. So I want to make sure that I am clicking this layer stack here to activate those uh, this layer. So let's create a box to start off with the handle. So any size box will do for now. Let's press F in the keyboard uh, to enter our front view. And let's just position that roughly around here. Now I can still go into my modify tab and adjust the length and width like so. So something like this would be fine. And I'm going to make sure I have zero um, or resetted my length, width and height segments just by right clicking these little spinners. I'm going to change this color to gray. And then I'm going to apply two edit polys on top. Press F3 on the keyboard to enter wireframe mode. And what I'm going to do here is just add some more resolution to get this curvature looking nicer. So let's press Alt 1 on the keyboard to allow um, us to put in some swift loops. And I'm going to enter my first uh, swift loop right where the apex of the bend is. So the part that sticks out the most, which is about here. Press W on the keyboard to enter my move tool. Just shift that over. And then let's add some more to get this curvature looking a bit nicer. So let's press Alt 1 again. Maybe about here. Let's move this over. I'm going to scroll a little bit up. Sort out this area here. So let's press Alt 1 again. And let's go about here. Press W on the keyboard and let's move this over. Great. So I'm just going to grab these vertices at the top here and just position them a bit nicer. So I'll probably um, fix the top up a bit later. So I'm just going to um, leave it about here. And I'm just going to grab the vertices on each each uh, side and just move that over to, to fit the shape a little bit better. I'm just going to go up and all the way down and fix up these vertices to make that fit the shape a little bit nicer. And down here as well. So we're just blocking out the shape here. To get a nice sort of base, I'm going to look at the side profile here. And what I'll do is enter object mode again by pressing uh, whatever button we have here punched in. So I have vertice uh, selected at the moment. I'm going to press 1 on the keyboard to enter object mode. Press R on the keyboard to enter scale mode. I'm just going to scale this to be a little bit wider. So that's looking pretty good. I think at this point here, there's not much we can do besides adding more resolution. And I do want this nice sort of curvature happening. Um, so in order to get more resolution and have a nice curvature, um, because it's already really low poly, we can apply something like an open subdiv, which will allow us to um, have more resolution to work with. So let's press open subdiv 
I'm going to turn ISO lines display off. Let's go to perspective mode. You can see we've got a lot more resolution to be playing with. Now I don't like how this is sort of smoothing up here. So what I'm going to do is go back to the first edit poly or the topmost edit poly. I'm going to press this button here, which is show end result. I'm going to turn that off and enter my polygon selection mode by pressing four on the keyboard, highlighting the top, control, selecting the bottom polygon and just pressing delete on my keyboard. So now I'm going to go back to object mode and if I press this button again to show the end result, you can see that we have this nice flat top, which is what we want. Great. So on top of my open sub div, I'm going to highlight that and then I'm going to press edit poly again to apply an edit poly on top to bake down that open sub div. And I'm going to press F on the keyboard and I'm going to further shape this ax handle. So go into my vertex selection, highlight these uh, row of vertices and just scale in when and out where necessary. I think that will do. So let's take a look at our work in the perspective view. Go into object mode and I'm going to turn wireframe on shaded off by pressing F4. Great. So that's looking pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's finish off the handle just by capping the top and bottom. So let's go back into our edit poly. Put wireframe on shaded back on. And then I'm going to press three on the keyboard to enter um, border selection, which is this one here. And this only works with an open face. So for example, we have a border here because there's a, there's an open face. So I can highlight this. And whilst we're here, we may as well do the bottom by holding down control, selecting that. And I want to cap that. So the hotkey is Alt P on the keyboard. The button is over here under edit borders in your command panel. Great. And let's get this nice rounded top here. So let's go into our polygon selection mode by pressing four, highlighting the top here. And I'm gonna hold down shift to scale inwards. So I'm gonna go into my scale mode, scale in, press W on the keyboard to enter You'll move and pull that up. So let's check our work out in the front view. So I'm pressing F on the keyboard and Z to focus up on my selection. Great, so something like that. And if we wanted to get this curvature a bit closer, what we could do is add another swift loop here. So let's press Alt 1. Let's add a swift loop about there. Right click to cancel the tool. And let's go into our scale mode using the middle uh, highlight of the gizmo. Let's just scale that out a little bit. Great. And let's do the same for the bottom here. So let's go to our polygon selection mode. I like the bottom and I'm going to do this completely in the front view. So let's press F on the keyboard, Z to focus up 
let's scale down. Oh, sorry, hold down shift and pull down. Move handle. Press R on the keyboard, scale in. And let's just get that shape looking right. I'm going to press F3 to enter wireframe mode. And then I'm going to hold down shift and pull that down again and scale that inwards to fit that shape a little bit nicer. Great. And then what I'll do is press one on the keyboard to enter vertex selection and just tidy this up a little bit. Great. So that will do for now. I think we can uh, come in and fix this up a little bit later. And let's take a look at our work. So we've got some smoothing group issues here. So I'm going to go to my polygon selection mode, highlight everything. And then on the right hand side in our command panel, under edit poly, towards the bottom we have polygon smoothing groups. I'm just going to clear all and give it a one. Great, so that's looking pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, we can come back to this a little bit later. So the next thing to do is to work out how we're gonna create this axe head. So I'm gonna make a new shape for this. So let's go back to our command panel. Let's go to the create tab. Under geometry, which is the first button pressed in, let's create a box. So roughly about this shape will be fine. We'll center this up anyways. So let's right click to cancel the tool. And what we can do here is center our objects. So I'm going to press G on the keyboard to bring up the grid. And I'm going to highlight my handle here. You can see it's sitting off center. And I'm going to just make sure that everything is centered or the pivot point is centered to the object. So I'm just going to go to my command panel, go to the third tab on, um, from the right, which is our hierarchy tab. I can affect a pivot only here and center that to the object. Turn that off. And down here in our transform options, I can right click these arrows to center that. To my world. Now, before I do this, I actually don't want to press all of these buttons. As you can see here, if I go into my front view, it's off uh, from the, uh, the reference image. So I'm going to press Control Z to go back. And I don't want to zero out the X, just the Y. We should put that right in the center. And I'm going to do the same thing for the axe head. So I'm going to click this box, go to my hierarchy tab, effect pivot only, center to object, and turn effect pivot only off. And then in my transforms, I'm going to zero out the Y. Great. So that's looking pretty good. So let's shape out this axe head. So let's go to the front view, press Z to focus up. So we'll pull back a little bit here. And then in my modify tab, by pressing one on the keyboard, um, zero, uh, so I'm gonna reset the length and width segments here. So they're all at one. I'm just gonna add a uh, two edit polys on top. I'm gonna change this to gray. Okay, so let's do a little bit of shaping here. I'm going to go to my vertex selection. Press F3 on the keyboard to enter wireframe mode. I'm just going to resize some of these vertices here. So I'm just going to bring that down a little bit. And I'm going to bring this up. And 
from here to here is supposed to be the same size. So I'm going to leave that for now and I can adjust that a little bit later. And what I want to do is extrude more resolution outwards to get this bladed section. Okay, so I'm going to go into my polygon selection mode by pressing 4 on the keyboard. I'm going to grab all of these polygons here. Hold down Alt to deselect the ones I don't want, which is this one. All these, these groups of polygons here. So I'm just left with this face. I'm going to hold down Shift to pull out in the X all the way to the edge here and then to get down here I think what I want to do is add a line here so I'll pro probably pull this back a little bit to about here then hold down shift again to pull out some more resolution and then highlighting this polygon I can hold down shift and bring that down so with this I can do a little bit of shaping so I'm going to press 1 on the keyboard and just reposition some of these vertices I'm going to grab this one here pull that up grab this one here pull that up all the way to here I'm going to stop about here, right before it starts to get sharp or before we start doing the sharp bit. And then I'm going to grab this one, pull that directly out. This one here. Put that there. And this one will go to about here. Right, and this one here we can pull down a little bit about that. So we need to add more resolution here to get this curvature looking the way we want it to. So I'm going to press 1 on the keyboard to go into Swift Loop. And about halfway would be fine here. Let's add another one here. And let's do a little bit of shaping. So right click to cancel the tool. Press 1 on the keyboard and let's reposition some of these vertices. So that one to there, grab this lot and bring it down here. And these guys, I'll bring that over to about there. So I'll grab this and just sort of soften that out a little bit, that transition. I'll reposition that as well. Right, so let's add some more running up and down. I'm going to press 1 on the keyboard. I'm going to add a swift loop about halfway here. And then another one here to get this curvature. And whilst we're here, let's add one halfway along this polygon so we can get this nice curvature here. Right click to cancel the tool. And let's do some shaping. So let's press 1 on the keyboard to enter vertex selection and just move some of these guys around. So I want to get this nice curve going here. Move over here, pull that down a bit. And then over here, I'm going to pull this up. So I think I do want to get this curvature here a bit nicer, so I might grab this, pull that up a little bit, and just sort of work my way around. So I'm going to grab this vertice and pull that down, go across, move this over a little bit if I wanted to, and then pull this vertex down, and then grab this one here. Just remember, I'm grabbing two vertices. So there's one in the front and one at the back. So I'm 
dragging a little box over to. And then I'm gonna grab this, just shift that over a bit. And then I might bring these guys over a little bit more just to spread that out a bit nicer. So it's look, looking pretty good, I think. Um, what I could do here is add more resolution over here, just so we can get that blade looking a bit nicer. Um, I think though, for now, we could just leave it. It's all depending on whether we want this to have a nice rounded sort of edge. Um, considering poly count, we might leave this like that, and it might give it a nice aesthetic as well. Bring a little bit lower in poly count. We'll see. We can always add in a little bit more later. Okay, so it's looking pretty good from the front view. I think though we need to start working on getting this blade to look a bit sharper. So what I'm gonna do is go back to my front view here, and go into my wireframe mode by pressing F3. And the axe sort of starts to get sharp or taper in from about here. So I'm gonna grab all of these vertices up to that point. And I'm gonna apply a an FFD modifier. So under my modifier list, if I scroll down a little bit, you can see we have a section called FFD. So I think I wanna add a FFD three by three by three. I think this should give, it, give us enough control points to, to get the shape looking the way we want it to. So that FFD is now localized to our selection we made earlier. And if I open up the drop down menu, click control points, I should be able to highlight these control points to manipulate the mesh underneath. So I'm gonna go do that into my perspective mode by pressing P on the keyboard, pulling back a little bit, pressing F3 to make sure I'm, I'm in the shaded view. And then I'm gonna grab all of these vertices or control points running along the bladed side, press scale, so R on my keyboard, and just scale inwards, to get that sharper bladed look. And then what I can do here is just focus along these uh, top control points. So scale that in to get the look that I want. And I'll do the same towards the bottom here. So I'll grab these group of control points, scale inwards. And just to get a nicer taper, grab all of these control points at the back and scale that in to get that nice tapered look. Great, that's looking pretty good. Might pull this in a little bit further just because I know that I'm gonna grab these vertices here and bring them in a little bit as well. Okay, so once we're happy with that, let's add an edit poly on top of our FFD. And let's do a little bit of shaping back here. So I'm gonna press one on the keyboard. I'm gonna grab this loop of vertices here. So I'm gonna grab the whole loop running around and just scale that in a little bit. And then these guys that are running along the center, I'll grab them. Just double check that I've grabbed the right ones. And I'm gonna scale that out slightly. And then the ones running along the back, 
Let me scale that in. Okay, so let's take a look at our work in object mode. And I'm gonna press F3, F4 on the keyboard and take a look. Right, it's looking pretty good. We do have some smoothing group issues, but we can work that out a little bit later. And we can always adjust in areas that we want. So for example, down here, I do want it to be a bit thinner. So I'm gonna scale that in. Grab these guys here as well, scale that in, just to get the shape that I want. Grab these guys, do the same. Do the same up here as well. Grab these guys and scale that in. All right, so that's looking pretty good. I think I do want to make some finer adjustments here. So I want that to be even or close to. So I'll grab these vertices, just scale them inwards. Might scale these slightly out just so we can have that looking a bit more consistent. And I might grab these guys here, which is this one. And just scale that out slightly. Right, so let's get the sharp part of the blade. So what I'm gonna do is um, press four on the keyboard to enter polygon selection. I'm gonna hold down shift Select this topmost polygon and hold down left click and drag down. Once I finish that selection, just release left click and click again and you should have that selection made. I'm gonna right click on the open space here and go to the bottom left hand quad menu where it says extrude. I'm gonna use the options here. And what I want to do is extrude in the local normal and just extrude out to get that sharp part. So it looks like I grabbed a little bit extra. So I'm just going to hold down Alt and deselect that part just to grab this side of the axe. So I'm going to extrude out a little bit and just press OK. What I'm going to do here is hold down control and click vertex selection to convert my selection into a vertex selection. And I want to weld these points together. So let's just right click, go to the bottom right hand, left hand quad menu, sorry. And when it says weld, let's use the options here. And then I'm just going to increase this threshold until they snap. So you don't want to go too far with the threshold because then they'll all eventually snap together like that, which is not what we want. We just want to get this look here. I'm going to press OK. And then in the front view, just do a little bit of positioning of these vertices. Get that looking right. Great. That was, looks pretty good. So let's take a look at our work. Right, starting to take shape. So I think at this point I might adjust the smoothing groups just so I can see what this is gonna look like. So let's go back to our edit poly, go to our polygon selection mode, and then let's grab these faces here If you're accidentally moving your polygons around like this, what you can do is press Q on the keyboard to go into selection mode. So that hides the gizmo. And that way, when we click in on our polygons, we don't accidentally move them. And let's do the same for the rear here. Let's 
Sometimes we can select through the polygon by accident. So just double check that we have everything that we want selected. And that's it. So it's just the front side and the back side as well. Let's clear all in our smoothing groups and let's give that a one. Great, so that's looking pretty good. Let's fix the top here. Let's grab these guys here. Making sure that we only have that part selected. And whilst we're here, we can select this bottom part as well. And let's clear all and give that a two. And let's take a look. Good. Now I think I do want a line here from this sort of section and this section here. So I'm gonna grab this polygon and this polygon, clear all and give that a three. I think that looks a bit nicer. The back is fine. And this part here looks almost fine. So we wanna grab this, this and this, clear all and let's give that a four. And we can get this blade to look a little nicer. So let's highlight the sharp part of our blade. Just one side, so not this side. Clear all and let's give that a five. And then let's grab the other side. Clear all and let's give that a six. Great, so that's looking nice and clean. And we've got this nice sharp edge. Great, so let's press F4 on the keyboard. Let's take a look at our work. Now I think going back into the front view, pressing F3, I do want a nicer curve here. So I'm gonna press one on the keyboard to just adjust this vertex here. And then I'm gonna press Alt one to add a loop right here. And then another one over here. Great, right click to cancel the tool. Press one again on the keyboard and just adjust. Get this curvature looking the way we want it to. And the other side as well. Let's take a look at our work. Great, so that's looking pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so now what we want to do is, I think I do want to chamfer the edge up here and down here slightly. And to do that, I'm just going to highlight the model. I'm going to add an edit poly on top just for the chamfering. Press F4 on the keyboard. And then I'm going to highlight the edges that I want. So I'm going to double click this edge here. And this edge at the back. This bottom edge. And this edge here. And then the same for the other side as well. So let's chamfer for this. So let's right click and let's go to our chamfer options here. And let's see how that's gonna look. So I'm gonna increase the amount, not by much. You can see we're getting some issues up here. So I think I'm gonna hold down Alt and deselect this end part just to see how that's going to look and I don't want any segments here so I'm going to right click 
or I'm going to reduce this to zero. Okay, so we'll increase this a little bit more. And I think I do want to get the back edge. I'm going to hold down control, highlight that, and the bottom part of here as well. I'm going to see what it will look like if I just grab that again. Okay, so I think I do want to grab the end part. So just this part here again. And I'm going to press OK to this. So we do need to do a bit of cleanup here. So you can see over here it's a bit messy. So let's do that now. So I'm going to press 1 on the keyboard to go into my vertex selection. And I'm just going to move this over and this one here over a little bit just so I can see what I'm looking at. Okay. Then I'm going to reposition these vertices here. So let's go to the front view. And let's reposition these vertices. And this one here as well. And let's taper this chamfer towards the pointy part of the blade. So let's just bring these guys up a little bit. And we'll stop about here. And up here. These vertices need to be sorted out. I'm going to pull that back a little bit. I think what I want to do is just merge these together. So let's right click, go to weld, weld options, and let's increase that threshold until they all snap together. So left click and drag up. Okay. Press OK. And that's looking pretty good. Let's just check everywhere else around the model to make sure it's looking good. And we've got an end gone here. So what I'm going to do is just grab this edge and this edge, and I want to connect that together. So let's cut across. Let's press Alt C, click this vertex and this vertex, right click and right click again to cancel the tool. And then we've got a nice quad here. Okay, so let's take a look at our work. In object mode, press F4. Great, and I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out. So it looks like we lost that edge a little bit. So I'm just going to go back to Edit Poly. Polygon selection, grab this edge again, clear it all, give it a 10, then grab the other side. Oops. Clear it all, and give that an 11. So we've got that edge back. And if we wanted to, we can fix this edge up again. I might do that. So I'm going to grab this edge just to this point here. And I'll grab the other side as well. Clear all. Give that a six. And I'll do the same for this underside as well. Clear all, give that a seven. And that should fix that right up. Great, so that's looking pretty good and I'm pretty happy with that. So that's the main part of the axe or hatchet. I'm pretty happy with how that's turned out. I think what I want to do is just add a little bit more of a visual interest here. Um, and I might do the braiding 
uh, all the wrapping around here. So to do that, we're going to use our curves as a, um, as a tool to help us achieve this look. And to get to our curves, we just need to go to our Create tab in our Command Panel. And instead of Geometry, which is the first button here, we want to move over to Shapes. And under Splines, we want to look for a helix. I'm going to click into the scene and drag out almost like a spring. So if I click again, I'll drag out the height or confirm the height. And then moving my mouse cursor up and down will drag out the um, tapering or the radius 2, which is the top radius. So any size will be fine because we'll adjust this a bit later. Right click. Let's go to our modify tab. And let's position this first in the center just by right clicking these uh, transform options down here and then let's reposition this in our front view. So it should be down towards the handle. Let's press F3 to go into wireframe mode. And I want to position this roughly halfway. It doesn't overly matter. And the height in my parameters here, I'm just going to reduce the height to fit. The radius, let's just match the top and bottom here. So the radius 1, just copy that, Control C, Control V and radius 2. And the turn amount should be quite a few. So at the moment I have a turn amount of roughly 4.5. Let's just increase that. Let's see. And we can change this later. So. 8 looks pretty good. Let's put in a number of 8. Now, we're going to apply a modifier to this helix. Oops. And I'm going to go to my modifier list, scroll all the way to the bottom. And I'm looking for something called sweep. So this one here, you can see we're getting a nice shape. So you can see there's a some built-in sections here. This might be nice. We can reduce the width of this, or we can try something else like a tube. Mm. This is not really going to work for us, so we might use a custom selection here. So we're going to make another shape. So let's go back to our Create tab under Splines. Let's create a line here. So I'm going to click in the open space, drag out a line, I'm going to click again, and I want a little lip here, so it's almost sort of folding on top of itself. So I'm going to click again, which is a little bit up and over one more time. So something like that. I'm going to right click these spinners to center that and just shift that over. And let's take a look at how this shape is going to look with the sweep modifier. So I'm going to highlight my um, my spline here, my helix, go back to the modifier tab. And then I'm going to pick a custom shape. And then let's use the pick button. Let's pick this here. And that's what it's looking like. Okay, so let's make some adjustments here. So I don't want any banking. So if you've got banking, let's just turn that off. And by default, yours might look, look like this. And what I want to do is 
angle that so it's sort of facing the right direction, something like this. And then of course we can come into our line again and make any changes like go into our selection here, our vertex selection and pull these around and it should update just like you see in the screen there. So let's bring this in a bit and let's grab the other side and bring that in as well. Pull that out a little bit. You can see we have these green handles here. So these are called Bezier handles. So we can move these around. And we need to highlight an edge, just like you saw me do there, in order to move along a particular axis. So I want to move it along the Y and X. So I'm going to highlight this middle section to highlight that yellow. And that will allow me to move that around. Just to help us visualize this a bit better, I'm going to go back out of this, go back to my grading here, and I'm going to add another modifier. So I'm going to press uh, my modifier drop down. I'm going to add a shell modifier, which is this one here. And this will just give it a little bit of thickness. And I'm going to uh, go into high quality mode. So you add a little bit of extra shading and reduce this outer amount to something more reasonable, something like that. And then I can go back into my line here and make adjustments using the vertex selection. That's looking pretty nice. I think what I want to do is bring this back. These guys in a little bit more. And I'm just going to right click, I'm going to highlight everything, right click, go to the top left hand quad menu and just pick a uh, corner or bezier corner. Actually, let's just pick corner. This should angle things out a bit nicer. Just make it a bit of an overlap. Something like this. Go. Okay, and in my top view, I just want to make sure this is lined up a bit nicer. So it's not on an angle itself. I can use my snap tools up here to help with that. So I can click the three up in my toolbar, right click and make sure I'm set to vertex and nothing else. I can snap this. around to make sure that's lined up properly. Let's take a look at that in our perspective. Right, so that's looking pretty good. Okay. So I think I want to smooth this out a bit. So I might grab these vertices in the middle on this line, right click and choose smooth. We have a nice transition here. And then let's go back to our helix. Go back down to the very bottom, making sure we have show and result on. And let's just do a little bit of adjusting. So let's reduce the height here. 
Oh, so the radius one and the radius two. Make that fit a little bit nicer. And then the height. And of course, if we wanted to add more turns, we can do that as well. Completely up to us. So I think we're gonna get this to look a bit tighter. Like this. And then I'm pretty happy with that. On top of our shell, to get this to fit really nice and snug, I'm gonna to go to my modifier list and then add an FFD 4x4x4. Open that up, go to control points, and let's just make this fit. Grab all of it, scale that in. Just spend a bit of time getting this to fit the way that you want it to. If any areas are sort of poking out, just grab the control points in that area. Just sort of fix that right up. change the color of that and I'm going to change the thickness as well it's a bit too thick for my liking so I'm just going to bring this down a little bit not too far down and make some adjustments to this curve again too much I think I do want this to be a bit more controlled it's a bit too soft on this side so I'm going to right click the uh, vertices in the middle here and use a bezier corner instead and that what what allows that uh, what allows uh, me to do is to control this curvature a bit. So I'm going to right click. Uh, so I'm going to select the Y and the X handle just by highlighting this center uh, gizmo, and that will allow me to just move each side. So this might be easier in the top view, just so we have this part here straight and this part here as well, but the center part has this nice curve to it. Okay. Great, so I'm pretty happy with that. I want to just see if we add an edit poly on top and I'm just going to smooth out the smoothing groups here. How that's going to look. Okay, and that's done a pretty good job. So I've just smoothed everything out and that's looking pretty nice. And we can always go back to our helix here make any adjustments we want. So if we want to add more or less, we might add a little bit more, maybe nine turns. Make this nicer sort of fit here. And of course we can always go back to our FFD and down to the control points and make some finer adjustments here.
pretty happy with how that's turned out. And adjust the smoothing grips down here a little bit because they're looking a bit off. And I might smooth this uh, curve out a little bit more. Just so it's not looking like that. Back to this. And of course, we can always adjust the sweep and do any sort of uh, changes here if we wanted to. So we can always adjust the angle and get something else, get a different shape or a different look. Great, so I'm pretty happy with that. I might leave that for now. We can always make adjustments to uh, the helix here so we can sort of um, grab another um, sweep and wrap this around so it's sort of covering this part here and sort of holding that shape in. Same with up here, just sort of to cap this braiding up a bit from the top and the bottom. Um, can spend as much time as we want on this if we wanted to. So it's pretty high poly at this point. Um, so you probably use this as a, an item for baking onto the mesh uh, texture itself. Um, so knowing that we could even add a turbo smooth or open soft div on top just to give a nicer sort of look to this um, if we're gonna be using this as a bake item. Right, so in the next video, we'll work on this braiding up here, which is a bit more trickier. Um, but other than that, I think it's looking pretty good. Pretty happy with how this has turned out. Let's take a look at this in isolation.